Hi guys, welcome to the Simple Things Podcast. Here, I teach you the very important algorithms that will help you become more, do more, achieve more, and live the life of your dream. There's something that is so important that a lot of people neglect, and that is your passion. A lot of people go into businesses, they go into things that they are not passionate about. Now, I've had the other side of the argument. That side is, as far as it brings money, please do that. Now, but there's something I call the super tank. If you can connect all your businesses to something you are passionate about. Now, that business could be as simple as farming yam, but it could also be as you know large and complex as aviation but if you can connect it to something that you are passionate about and that passion could be that you want humans to succeed okay so whether they're succeeding through farming through aviation through engineering through construction through education whatever it is it is connected to that your overarching passion which is to see people succeed and if you are able to find that every other thing you do whether it's it agriculture construction real estate whatever it is they will all percolate to that or build up to that and i call that particular one super tank and that super tank is what you feel and feed that feeds these other ones that may just give you money but you are not passionate about them in my own, I am passionate about changing people's life. I love seeing somebody who is disoriented, who doesn't know where to go, who thought money is just about connection or who is coming to help you or even about religion. I enjoy taking the person step by step until the person succeeds and understand that the God who made you may not even be able to help you without you putting in the requisite effort. If every day God shows up, he shows up to help and then you are not interested you are sleeping you are joking you are not interested you are blowing every of his plans for you over time god will know that you are not serious and god will say let me allow him some time probably when he learns his lesson i'm going to be back here i can say that it's very important to know that there are there's what i call passion finder and i'm going to take you through three steps on how to discover your passion Number one is what I call aptitude. Aptitude. The whole thing is A A R M, but the first A there is aptitude. Aptitude is your natural propensity to something. Attitude is your natural propensity to something. If you love talking, you may find out that every time you write your talk from beginning to the end, you stutter, you don't even know what to say. If you have natural propensity for defending people, everywhere you see injustice, it's like they're calling you, hey, come around, come and help us here. If you have the propensity for sports, you know, if you have the propensity for critical thinking or finding solutions to problems, you know, everywhere you look, you're able to find solutions even when people think there are no solutions. In fact, sometimes when I show people business opportunities in a place they've been for 3 years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, they're going to say, well, how did you see that? I have propensity for such. Now, it's not because I'm wiser than those people. It's probably my education, my schooling, my um, experiences, my exposure probably my you know environment do could all contribute to how i see things for instance being disabled on my lower limbs i don't move around a lot so i have a lot of time to think to read you know i've read everything possible under the earth the point is it's not because i'm more interested but i'm more um intelligent but because my physical nature constrains me to that i go to work from monday till sunday my physical nature constrains me to that i don't love 
um, entertainment a lot. I love just intellectual things, you know, reading, understanding, solving problems. The one you invited me to, the one you do, you didn't invite me to. I love, you know, my space and all those kinds of things. You know, that way it becomes easier for me to have developed some certain things around my life regarding, you know, how to solve problems. The same for you. You may love entertainment. So anything you see, you can turn it into skits. You can turn it into entertainment. You can turn it. And that's why if you open a comedy company, you will do so well. I can give you so much comedy if you are close to me. But you see, if you want me to open a comedy company and run it as such, I may not do well. Why? Because it's not my, you know, aptitude. Okay, now that doesn't mean that if I want to do it, I can do it and I will do it well and I'll succeed in it. But I'll succeed in it with a lot of struggle. I yeah, I will wake up to go to the comedy show and I feel, what am I even doing? Where am I going there? What am I? You see, but if it is a teaching show, if it is an educational thing, if it is just Come and educate people, speak to people, change their lives, and then add comedy to it. Oh, amazing. I can come there, and then I can do all the comedy while teaching. The teaching is my is my major passion. So if you remove it from anything I do, I don't have the love and the joy for that. Okay? So you see why you are ability to find what you love. Yes, and then build your businesses around it or build business some businesses around it is very important. Aptitude has to do with your natural propensity. So are you a critical thinker? Are you a natural entertainer? Are you a natural speaker? Are you somebody who likes staying on your own alone? Are you a natural you know counselor? Are you a natural mentor? Are you a natural educationist are you a natural critical thinker problem solver are you you know you're natural you love doing something with your hands all those and all those they are all the things you're going to look at and then you're able to say these are my aptitudes and i want you to pick up a piece of paper and write down all your aptitudes okay intangible and tangible so whether they are soft skills or whether they are hard skills or whether they're in between soft and hard you know, yeah, semi soft, semi hard. You know, write down all of them from your character traits. Okay, you can say, I'm a very humble person. You can say, I'm a very um, determined person. I'm a very confident person. And I'm a very um, shy person. And I'm a very whatever it is you want. You can write all of them down. Your natural propensities, the positives. Okay, shine it. They're not coming there. Now, when you write all of them down, yeah. Then you now keep it one place and now you go to the second A, A A R M. The second A has to do with what are your aspirations. I've thought this thing a million times if you go through some of my videos. Because people come to me, when I'm mentoring them, I find out that what they're doing, they don't love it. They're working and they don't love their work. So every day is like you are killing them and they're going out there unhappy they're going out there just trying to make ends meet they're going out there feeling that you are forcing them because of that they are very intelligent but they seem not to be extraordinary with their works with their you know job because there's a difference between your work and your job your work is that in day you go every day to do and they pay you money but your work is what why god brought you here but that's not our discussion Maybe in another video, we'll talk about all that. But you see, when you list down all your aspirations, so let me give you another example. So I'm a natural speaker. I'm a natural problem solver. I'm a natural thinker. I'm a natural confident person. I'm a very determined person. I am blah, blah, blah. But you see, my aspiration is not to be, for instance, with my talking. I don't want to be a politician. With my talking, I don't want to be a pastor. With my talking, I don't want to be an activist. But you see, a lot of people, 
want to they can talk very well and they want to be pastors they want to be politicians they want to be activists that's aspiration so whilst your aptitude can be can help you in what you've chosen to do that same aptitude can help you in a lot of other things or if you decide to apply it to other things so if i want to be a pastor and decide to apply how i speak to my pastoral ministry or ministrations i will do well if i decide to be a politician and apply the same way i speak to my policy i will do well if I decide to be a normal lecturer in the university, which I was, and I decide to apply it in the normal teaching, I'll do well. But I don't love those. I resign from lecturer, from lecturing in the university and left it to use the professorship. Why? I don't feel that oomph. I don't feel that joy. I don't feel like you come, you're looking at a curriculum and you are teaching um, logic. What is logic? Logic is blah, 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 blah. And if you want to veer off and show the application in such a very radical way, it appears as if you are no more teaching philosophy, which is my major in the university. So I felt that I don't want to teach students and they are constrained that they must take exams. So every time I'm teaching, I am conscious of the father. So I'm teaching them what they can use to become powerful in the society. There's no way you're going to ask those questions in exams because your colleagues and your HOD and the exam, um, exam officer, they will query that. They will say, but this is outside the scope of what you're supposed to teach them. You're teaching them business. You're teaching them motivation. Mm -hmm. You're teaching them psychology. You're teaching them. So they will query that. They will think there's no more philosophy. So over time, I wasn't so happy about that. I felt what I need that was I just want to be in a school where I teach people, not because they're going to take exams, but I teach them to just learn and go out there and practice that. Because of that, I was suffocating in the university and I left the university. So in my own business school, Sean Cousins Business School, in my own training company, Sean Cousins Consulting Solutions Limited, in my own other company, Online Life Executive Programs, I am free to teach what I want to teach. I teach people and they're not constrained to take exams. The exams is in the marketplace. The exams are in life and they go out there and they succeed full time and real. And that's what makes me happy. I don't want you to have an A in my course. And you are not having A in life. So because of that, my aspiration was not to be a lecturer, my aspiration or continue to be a lecturer, my aspiration is not to be a politician, my aspiration is not to be a pastor that is constrained in a particular denomination, my aspiration is not to be an imam in a particular mosque. My aspiration is to be free so I can teach who, whether you're a Christian, you're a Muslim, you are a Taoist, you are a Confucian, you are a Hinduist, you are whatever, you are an atheist. I can teach you and you can find the truth in what I'm teaching. So that is my aspiration. So you can already see, you can have aptitudes that can be used in other places, but you aspire for a single thing. Having said that, what are your aspirations rather what are your aptitudes and what aspiration are you connecting them to the same aptitude can be used in lots and lots of aspirations positively and negatively that is the second a now the rm i talked about aarm the rm there stands for realities of the market so whether you want to be, um, you know, whatever you want to be, whatever you are aspiring to do with your aptitude, it must have the capacity to give you sustenance. So if you want to be an activist, how do you make money to sustain yourself, sustain your family and live the kind of life you want to live without compromising, without doing the wrong things? How can you do that? That is where the realities of the market comes in. So you need to know how do you productize what you are 
aspiring for an audio aptitude how do you product tax them and monetize them in such a way that people can pay for it organization can pay for it so if you are an activist for instance is it possible that you can have your organization in such a way organize it in such a way that you can win grants for your activism so if you're an activist you don't have a platform you don't have an ngo you registered you don't have an advocacy group you belong to or register and you are not applying for grants and you are not organizing what you are doing in such a way that you know international development agencies and, and funding organizations and grant organizations can look at it and say you are doing something reasonable and we are ready to put in our funds here if you are like that you are wasting your time you don't understand the realities of the market. You'll be 20, you'll be 30, you'll be 40, you'll be 50, you'll be 60, you'll be 70, 80 in, in years. How do you sustain yourself? That is why you see a lot of people, they are um, activists or they are good people or they're fighting for the right of the society or they're teaching people free and over time, when they are getting older, you see them, all the monies they rejected, all the things the government they refused to frolic with, all the fraud they never did, you see them at 40 something, 50, start doing those things. And you're wondering, what is wrong with this man? How could he change this way? The point is, he didn't understand the realities of the market. And as he gets older, the realities of life will start dawning on him. And he says, Who oh, goodness, Ep? who righteousness app who activism app if you can't win them you join them and you see the guy you see the woman joining them at a very old age go online you can see them go to during political era periods you can see them and you wonder what ah, i don't know this man is like this it's because they didn't do their homework well so if you have done your homework well, you should have been able to have organization that is well run, that is on its own, that can sustain you and then you won't lie and then you keep doing what you are doing. So before the video gets <laughs> so long, in finding your passion, you must have a aspiration, rather aptitudes, you must write all of them down. Aptitudes or your natural propensity, the things that come to you naturally. They could be talking, thinking, convincing people, conflict resolution, confidence, determination, problem solving, critical thinking, seeing opportunities, you know, all kinds, writing and all those. Number two, the second A, aspiration. You are going to connect your aptitude to your aspiration. So, with all this you're writing, with all this your confidence, with all this your determination, with all this your um, you know, courage, with all this your ability to solve problems, what do you want to do with your life? You connect your as rather your aptitude to your aspirations. Do you want to be a pastor? Do you want to be an activist? Do you want to be an imam? Do you want to be a businessman they want to be an entrepreneur they want to be um, an activist they want to be a politician they want to be what do you want to be do you want to be a teacher a mentor do you want to be a guru whatever you want to be yes you now connect this up to rather aptitude to your aspirations then the third one rm realities of the market you find out how can this be sustainable because for every single thing on earth, money runs it. How can it be sustainable without me compromising who I am and my ideals, realities of the market? So what can you sell? What platforms can you build? What services can you attach to that? What products can you attach? How do you build the systems around them? If you're an NGO person, how do you work around so that you can have programs that are being sponsored? by international development agency united nations um, um systems or sponsored by government ministries government agencies sponsored by governments sponsored by um you know organized private sector and all the south can you walk around so that your organization 
will be able to organize itself in such a way that they can have platforms, products, and services they offer that people are sponsoring. So that it makes you to have your mouth, makes you to have your righteousness or holiness or your moral morality or morals, and you are able to keep through that until you die. Otherwise, over time, as you're getting older, the children are entering the university and all those, you're paying 3 million, 5 million, 10 million, 20 million in school fees. What happens if you start compromising? Because you now know it is not as easy. So you say, if I can join, if I can win them, I join them. Who righteousness app? Who this one app? Who this one app? And you will change your language and you will change everything. In business, you start cutting corners, you start doing why you start doing GPT, you start doing you know, you start doing things that are not right. You know, you eat people's money and all those. Yeah, you used to be a good guy, they give you money, you do the job, but now you can't no more because when they pay you the bills are there waiting to collect money. So that's that. You see. So you need to understand how to go about these things yeah so if you've not subscribed to this channel you've not subscribed you've not put on the notification button you've not followed you've not shared you've not commented you've not given us a thumb up i encourage you to do that right now please subscribe so that all the good stuff we put out here you'll be notified when they are here i appreciate you for listening me remember only do us go to the bank only those who do do go to the bank if you don't do you'll just be just <laughs> an armchair philosopher be a practical philosopher go out there and do change your world and change your life see you in the next episode